Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hi, welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm Christy, and today we are going to radiate movement with Andrea Skavronik. Did I get it right? That's right. Thank Good, you. fantastic. And uh, if you've been listening to us for a while, then you notice my voice is very off. That's okay. It's allergy season here in Kansas City, and I'm just getting off of a really nasty cold, but don't worry, Andrea, I should not be contagious. All right. <laughs> Good. So Andrea is the, well, recently former artistic director of City in Motion. Yeah. City in Motion is a dance troupe that's been around, what, about 25 years? No, 33 years. 33 years? We're going on our 30, into our 34th season, so. Oh my gosh. Well, tell us a little bit about City in Motion. Sure. It was founded in 1985 by five um, dancers, and they were mostly connected with the Westport Ballet, but they wanted to do modern dance, and they wanted to found a center for modern dance in Kansas City, because they're really were no other modern dance companies. No, really not. Was, Al, was Alvin Ailey? Uh, no. Nope, not they, even. They came in, I think, in 87, so just a little bit after. And they came in, well, there's a little story I can tell you about that, but <laughs> but um, there was the conservatory, of course, where, Conserv- they taught, mm-hmm. um, where they taught dance, but there was no modern dance company. There mm-hmm. was Susan Warden. She was in Kansas City, Kansas, so... Um, close by, but nothing, you know, Kansas City based per se. Yeah. So they started it and, um, it's been a professional dance company, a school of dance and a presenter of dance ever since. Wow. And so did City in Motion start with the company or the school or did they start just everything at once? Started with the school. So Mm. the five dancers knew that they wanted to build the organization from the ground up and educate people, educate children, educate Mm -hmm. adults about modern dance in particular, but there were a a variety of dance classes. And then they knew if they were educating children that that would be the audience of the future. Mm -hmm. So it was very wise. And then um, just shortly after that, they founded the dance company, the professional company, um, and then the performance series. So it was kind of an umbrella organization for these. Sure. But these. everything for modern dance. Right. Right, because we really didn't have anything like that. I was around in 1985, and, yeah, dance was very underrepresented. This has mm-hmm. always been the Symphony Town, Theater yeah. Town, etc. Ballet. The Kansas but, City Ballet was here. And um, is a wonderful organization. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, nothing sort of grassroots, modern and then the 80s and 90s, there was a whole renaissance. Now there's tons of oh theater companies, gosh, lots yes. of dance companies, um, just a whole great variety of the things that makes make Kansas City a fun place to be. Right, right. I mean, it has been really an explosion of uh, mm-hmm. performing arts, which has been great. And how long have you been with involved with City in Motion? So I'm not one of the founders, but I'm one of the original mm-hmm. dancers in the company. Okay. So from the very beginning, I've been dancing with the company, and then they, all the founders, moved on um, by 1995, and then I became an artistic co-director. And I also directed the school for a few years, so Mm -hmm. I've kind of worn several different hats. Um, But artistic directors choreograph, they run the dance company, done a lot of grant writing. Wow. Because we're a not-for-profit organization. Exactly. Um, but it's been a great journey, and I'm just, yeah, I'm retiring as an artistic director. I'm still going to run the dance, the children's dance oh, company. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and scholarship program. So oh, that's still great. Still going to do that for oh, a bit yeah. longer. Oh, yeah, because the City in Motion Dance School has really blossomed as well. Oh, it's there's huge. tons of adult classes, everything from yes. belly dance to clowning that mm-hmm. Beth Bird does. There's... Um, 
there's been ballroom classes, uh, West African, women of the drum. I mean, the, a huge variety of adult classes where adults feel comfortable dancing, you know. Right. And then the children's program. And then we have a scholarship program for kids and a children's dance theater. So they're kind of a professional track group. Oh, that's exciting. I know I always love to go with my daughter. We both love to go to the Dance in the Park. Oh, it's so much fun. Oh, my gosh. Here in Kansas City, we've got this Dance in the Park program in the sem- in September, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Can you tell a bit about that, too? Yeah. It's always the first Saturday after Labor Day. It's in beautiful Roanoke Park in the Westport area, Westport Roanoke Park. Right, in the middle of Kansas City. Yeah, and it, these beautiful big trees. It's a gorgeous location. It's free, so we mm-hmm. have sometimes a thousand people in the audience <laughs> who bring picnics. You can um, just relax on the grass and watch this amazing performance. It's modern dance, but it's also a lot of ethnic forms, um, so we try to make it really varied and just very accessible for people who might not be able to see dance in a theater or right. you know bring their whole family but you really do bring it all I and mean, there's the modern there sometimes is ballet mm-hmm. um hip-hop mm-hmm. which i love the hip-hop dancing mm-hmm. uh african celtic yeah i mean pretty much every i've seen it everything there almost but maybe square dancing Right. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've got any square dancing. <laughs> so we here's could. the challenge for all square dancers yeah. in the Kansas City region. Maybe a contra dance group. Oh, or that something. would be fun. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. We've had, we have had Hawaiian dance. Oh my gosh. We've had Philippine dance. There's so many ethnic communities that have their own dance forms that we try that you may have never seen. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. I remember even there was a an artist who was incorporating movement while he was painting. Mm-hmm. Uh, a portrait of Michael Jackson. Yeah, so, yeah, that I was amazing. That, show. that, was, <laughs> that was so much fun. That was. That we was go really every fun. year. Oh, so, good. Yeah. yeah so, m- movement must be very important to you, of course. And when we were talking earlier, um, oh my gosh, I just got so excited because you were talking about like bringing spirituality and movement and bringing brain-based studies into mm-hmm. movement, mm-hmm. and. I, that just got lit, got me lit up so much, okay. and I think even for kids that this is wonderful to express and have them yes. and experience it. Can yes. okay? So let's start with the spirituality and movement. Okay, yeah, I think as humans, <laughs> we've <laughs> always danced, you know, to the rhythm of our heartbeat, to drumming. It's a part of our culture, and in a lot of cultures, um, especially indigenous ones. People dance for a, a, in a trance form. You know, it, it's it's a physical thing, but they leave their bodies in order to reach a spiritual realm, and that's something I've always been interested in. Um, as a performer, we experience that you know joy and transcendence on stage. But I was interested in it. You know, also like why is that? Why do so many cultures um, transcend the body into they the spiritual do. place? Right. Yeah, and then whirling dervishes. So I, right. I just did a piece um, called Time Sequence that was inspired by whirling dervishes. Just the idea that they're spinning, spinning, and they leave their body and reach um, nirvana or that you know transcendent ether wow. ether state. Right, right. I, you know, we we hear the the term whirling dervishes. We kind of have some idea of well, it's dance and it's spinning, but there must be more to a whirling dervish than that. So can you tell us maybe where that's from? It's part of the Muslim culture. They're traditionally Mm -hmm. in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never been to Turkey or seen any dervishes from that part of the world, but I've seen it on video. Um, And it's, it's mostly men, you know, (laughs) really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why, if that's just part of the, a cultural thing, but it is indeed men. Um, and it, sort of what I've also experienced in Kansas City are the Sufi dancers who yes. do the spinning also with yes. the same sort of circle motif to reach mm-hmm. um, that state of enlightenment. And then bringing it into the modern dance world, there was a dancer named Laura Dean, um, who would do choreography with just spinning dancers. She's very famous for that. Um, so kind of all that kind of meshed into my inspiration for this piece. Oh, that's wonderful. How did the dancers take to it? 
You know, <laughs> they were very brave. Um, there's a section at the, they get very dizzy. I can imagine. And there's a section at the end where they're spinning, 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 and they wow. can take a break and breathe and make a shape, and then they ro rotate the other direction. Wow. Um, and so, you know, bless them. They, they stuck with it. <laughs> uh, but you can get very dizzy and you almost feel nauseous. Oh, right. If you're not used to, to doing it, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. I have terrible plan with motion sickness myself and mm. just even turning once makes me extremely dizzy. Yeah. Um, so, but when these dervishes are doing this dance, do the, do you feel like they, they're, they're fighting that or do they just kind of embrace it or do they incorporate it? Do I feel think like that's they? a real process, but I think it's ultimately a very joyful expression. It doesn't seem like it's painful. Or <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's nothing that you can run into right, right. if you get very dizzy. Yeah. Yeah, I know that children love to spin. Yes. It's even good for their brains from what I hear. Right. So that's part of the brain dance. Oh, okay. how wonderful. About disorientation. Oh, my gosh. Do you want me so to go through please that? Please do. Okay. So the brain dance was codified by a woman named Anne Green Gilbert. She's in Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. And she was a PE teacher, um, you know, kind of a, I wouldn't call her a professional dancer. She was more in the PE realm, into the science realm, biology, and she started studying body systems. Um, it's related a little bit to somatic movement and mm -hmm. um, Laban Bartanyev work. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Rudolf Laban was a modern dancer in Germany in the 1920s, which is around the same time that Martha Graham was starting in the oh, United States. Right. So it's kind of at the same time. And um, all of their modern dance was pretty theatrical. It got kind of cut off, you know, with World War One and Two. So their modern dance formed a little differently than here in the United States. Um, but he connected up. So he was a dancer, and um, he invented Laba notation, where you actually write the dance steps in this kind of a visual form. Right. And then um, he connected up with Ermagard Bartenev, who was a physical therapist. So between the two of them, they studied body systems, curling, rolling, crawling, developmental patterns. And they watched babies from, you know, zero oh to 12 God. and how they developed. And so Anne Green Gilbert took a lot of this and put it into a brain dance system. So it starts with breathing because mm -hmm. we all breathe when we reach this world when we right. are born um and we will take our last breath <laughs> someday <laughs> you know it's part of our uh why we live on this planet our connection with the planet um second is tactile so how touch is important to brain development and how babies who are not touched maybe neglected yes. in an orphanage even in the zoo, baby monkeys who've lost their mothers, they give them that surrogate, you know, yes. um, mom to cling on to. Because we know now that if babies are not touched and held, they their brains don't develop. Right. Third one is head to tail. So that's babies like to be swaddled, and then eventually they open up into an X and an O kind of shape. Yeah, X's and O's is the third one. Sorry. Nice. And then head to tail, um, snaking the tailbone to the, um, the head because it's all part of the spine. So that's developmental movement as well. Um, then we get into upper body, lower body. <laughs> so upper body movements and then lower body, warming those places up and connecting them. Then right brain, right side of the brain, left side of the brain. So when children learn to read, they track, in our culture, left to right, but it right. could be up to down. It's just the way your eyes um, track. And, of course, we know that if you move with the right side of the body, it's the left part of the brain that is mm -hmm. connecting and vice versa. So... In yoga tradition, you've got um, alternate nostril breathing, and it goes yes. in one side and out the other. That's right and left brain, or right and left body half. Sure. Then we go into cross-lateral. So that's when you cross the body, 
Um, so crawling is cross lateral because it's opposite arm mm -hmm. and leg. When we walk, we walk cross laterally. And when you move that way, it also stimulates the brain, um, kind of wakes you up. And then the last one is disorientation. So that we see that in children who like to spin sure. and fall down, or um, why do we like to ride on roller coasters? You know, it's to get disoriented. Um, swinging movements um, are all disorienting. And the reason is because your inner ear, your equilibrium, kind of likes to be off a little, and then it recalibrates. That's the science behind it. Or, right. Or headstands. Sure. Yoga, we go upside oh, right. down to bring blood to the brain. Um, mm -hmm. That's definitely disorienting. Anytime the head is below the hips. Got it. Right. So it's all a part of, we all have a body <laughs> as humans. That's our house, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know, how does that work in terms of our brain and what we like to do as humans, transcending the body, spinning, right. going upside down. Um, it's really very fascinating to me. And I think it ties in with massage, with Reiki. You know, it's all your energy, your chakras, your auras, as we extend even past our bodies. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's fascinating how all of these things do overlap, yeah, you know. Yeah. We've got this house of the body and all the things that we can do with it. I don't know if you're familiar with Donna Eden. No. No. So she's an energy... I don't know, what would you call her? But she's developed this Donna Eden energy medicine where it's different movements prescribed to uni unify the left half and the right half oh. of the brain, oh. right? Kathy Lesmeister of Radiate Wellness, who shares this office space, practices Donna Eden energy medicine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's another form that's fascinating. I'm sure there another are up, mm -hmm, yeah. I'm sure there are other systems as well right. that do this, that yeah. cross that energy. Um, I do some of the Donna Eden stuff with my Sunday school kids. Wow. Yeah, and the kids really enjoy that. Oh, I'll have to look at it. Right. And then in theater school, um, our movement coach, Jennifer Martin, you may know her. Yeah. Yeah, right. So our movement uh, school, UMKC Theater School, um, we worked on different exercises that united mm. those parts of the brain, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it's just it's interesting how our brains and our bodies work together and how we can – just play with this and experiment with it and do different things with it and all of it just connects to our spirit as well I'm getting kind of a, a outside of myself there but no I agree and also just historically looking back at um how the body was negated for so long tell me about that well I'm just thinking <laughs> the Puritans you know the pilgrims oh, yes okay <laughs> and it right. has to do with religion and systems of religion where the body was considered evil and bad and you didn't want to spend any time dancing or right. <laughs> caring for the body in that way. It was all very cerebral or spiritual, but look how disconnected it was. So it disconnected. didn't have anything to do with our physical reality. Mm -hmm. So I think luckily as a culture, we're looking at more um, Eastern medicines that mm -hmm. look at the whole system mm -hmm. instead of just, you know disease in one organ where it could be related to your whole body as a system. Right. We're just still learning about Eastern medicine and how um, that could be used as, along with Western medicine. Right. Just, along with, a, there's nothing yeah. to, you know, keep them apart. It's medicine. And then with speaking of religion, it is so funny how there are certain people who certain sects, certain uh, religions who will take the body out of the equation mm -hmm. and then others who put it very much in it. For right. example, the Puritans on, on one side. Mm -hmm. But then we've got Native American spirituality has a huge movement component yes. and the dervishes right. and um, Sufi dancing mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, Jewish dancing. Right. Or the black church, you know, the Baptists that are mm. moving and grooving to the music. I'm thinking of Are the Aretha Franklin. Oh, as in gospel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You involve the whole it's, body. Of course. It's like it comes through the whole body. So it's it's fascinating to read about and learn about these, yeah, different religions and what is not acceptable. Spirituality. What what's, mm -hmm. I think about um, the Hawaiian culture and their beautiful 
movement related to the earth and the sky and the water, you know, in the hands, and Tahitian with the very fast hips. But when the missionaries came to those islands in the 1800s, they forbade them to dance. What? And their culture was almost, I mean, their dance culture was almost wiped out. Oh. I remember being so angry when I first read about that. And, of course, they had to wear Western clothes and not their little grass skirts. And um, it's like it just squashed, squashed, almost squashed it permanently. But it, it now there's a huge revival and there's tons of Hawaiian dance schools where, you know, that tradition is being kept up. But, right, yeah. Right. Or look what we did to the Native Americans. I mean, Oh, absolutely. So um, just that respect for um, what is natural and real and what's mm -hmm. been developed through centuries. With Hi, this is Christy. I just want to say that we here at Radiate Wellness hope you're enjoying this podcast. It's free to you, and we hope that you find it informative and inspirational, heck, even fun. We have just three small asks of you to help us radiate growth. First, please hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on. That way, you'll receive a notification every time that we have a new podcast episode out. Next, please give us a thumbs up, a like, or a five-star review. If you're feeling inspired, a positive review wouldn't hurt. These two small things will help others find us when they're searching for great podcasts. Finally, please tell your friends about the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Better yet, show them how to find us and how to subscribe. If everyone did that, we would double our audience. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. The body and the spirit is really important. It is important. And with some of those cultures, like you talk about the Tahitian culture, um, I'm sure the Balinese culture, the uh, Hawaiian culture, the um, those type of cultures, you take away the dance, and the Native Americans too take away the dance, and that's a huge part of their culture. Yeah. Right? The the movement. Yeah. And then there's the slaves. Oh, right. About jazz dancing. Do, mm. do you know about no. that story? No. So when the slaves were brought to America, they really weren't allowed to dance, um, and they mm -hmm. were in chains, <laughs> but they stopped or did body thing, and that mm -hmm. developed into tap dancing. And I was not aware of that. Yeah. So the enslaved people from Africa, from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. the enslaved people coming in to the United States. Right, to the United States. Right. There were some plantation owners that would allow their black slaves to dance, like compete against other plantations, and that's how the cakewalk developed. the The black um, the slaves would imitate their white masters, and so they would, you know, strut, and maybe the whites wouldn't even know that they were being imitated. But you know, they were having little fun competitions, and so um, really. Jazz dancing comes from black dance. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. we know music. Music jazz does, music, of, course. of course. But also um, the Charleston. Really? We've actually traced the Charleston back to African dance steps. Oh, how interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I always think of that as such a typical white bread, white culture type of yes. dance. It's because the whites took it over. Like, yes, this is so fun. It became a big social dance. Right. But it, you can look at videos of the Charleston or the Lindy Hop I've seen on YouTube that have um, black performers doing them mm -hmm. as well. But it was squashed, you know. Of course. Um, well, and co-opted, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, white culture has co-opted so much of black culture. Yeah, or Elvis Presley. Right, you know, exactly. all the hips and the... Um, Even the, the Beatles. Rock and roll. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, it, yeah, I think, I mean, the good thing is that we've been all exposed to it, and um, we can read about it, and it's it's revived. I think it's become people realize that it's important, um, indigenous dance. I think so too, indigenous and dance. And yes, and indigenous cultures, whatever they are. Um, and this, this 
oh, this movement, it just, it feels so visceral when you talk about it, mm, you know, mm-hmm. it just feels, you feel so connected to just like the deepest innermost feelings and thoughts, you yes. know, just the, the emotions. Yes. And a lot of, um, well, there's therapists that use movement and dance. In I was order wondering to free, uh-huh, to free the body and sure. somatic dance work or movement therapy. Um, it's definitely, yeah. Yeah, I was tool. wondering. Sure, mm-hmm. right. So there are actual dancers who are movement therapists or mm-hmm. somatic therapists to get right. people in their body. Well, you know, as a Reiki practitioner, I know we have all of our emotions like we. St- stomp down into our bodies, into our tissues, you know, even during a Reiki session, we're moving the energy and long buried emotions will come out in a massage that will happen as well. Rolf, the rolfing yes, technique, yes. you know, you get uh, rolfing is just very, very, very deep tissue work and releasing memories, releasing emotions, this type of thing. And so, um, I don't know where I was going with this, but <laughs> <laughs> that when we do move the body like that, it, it just stirs up so much emotion and gets us in touch with that. And I can imagine it would be very powerful as a therapeutic technique. Absolutely. You know, Mm -hmm. have you heard of Gabrielle Roth? No. She developed the five rhythms. Oh, interesting. And she was at Esalen back in the sixties. She learned massage therapy and she developed this, um, with music. So it starts, um, uh, I can't remember them all at the moment, but it goes through um, flowing, chaos, different, you're dancing, mm-hmm. and then it ends up at stillness at the end. Mm-hmm. And the, her whole idea is the fastest way to still the mind is to move the body. Oh, that's interesting. So it's, you know, you're kind of getting out those emotions on the dance sure. floor. You're releasing stuff with all of these five rhythms. Um, flowing, chaotic, you know, finally stillness at the end. And um, it's a whole another system of right movement that is done. Movement with expression. Mm-hmm. Right. That anyone can do because we all have a body. We, everybody has a body. You don't, you don't have to be a trained dancer. You just no. move with the music. And there's people that are trained in the five rhythms to <coughs> facilitate it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that's another and another one now is called Gaga. What for after Lady Gaga? No, it is Israeli. So it's from the Bat Sheva Dance Company in Israel, which was kind of founded a little by Martha Graham. It, Martha Graham was one of the original. She was kind of a co-artistic director for a while. So it's it's a modern dance company in Israel. Okay, called Bat Sheva. Yes, which sounds very Indian. Very, yes. it sounds very Hindu. Yeah, I'm okay. not sure the origin of the name. Mm-hmm. And then Ohad Naharin is the artistic co-director, and he has developed this Gaga form, which reminds me of the five rhythms. Sure. It's another organic way of move, moving the body. You have a hundred people in a room all doing these rhythms and. I've not actually taken a Gaga class, but I've, I've seen it. But it's very hip and popular right now. Oh, how fun. Um, and there's classes in New York and mm-hmm. uh, another way to just connect back to the body and use that to be, as a healing tool. Oh, I love that. Well, and you've reminded me of Tai Chi, too. Mm-hmm. You know, just you're talking about the final movement of stillness being very meditative. And yes. so, you know, Tai Chi is very scripted movements and they're very meditative. Yes. But moves your energy. Yes, the right? chi. Yeah, it moves your chi. Moves exactly. The chi through and around. And yeah, so good for your heart. So um, it slows slows our fast mo- bodies and minds down and yeah i mean they've done all kinds of studies on how beneficial it is yeah tai chi is wonderful if you can find a good class or something like that yeah. it's martial art which is hard to mm-hmm. even wrap my mind around but mm-hmm. it's a form of kung fu i i believe yeah i've done a little just a very little right just of like it and it's um, yeah it's lovely it's great Lovely. (laughs) I'd highly recommend it. (laughs) Well, to me, any form of dance is just wonderful and transcendent. Um, You know, I can get 
my music on Joy Division or a New Order, mm-hmm. Google Bordello, oh, yeah. uh, any of my favorite music. And it's just, I feel like I'm out of my body. Exactly. And it's very, you feel great. I mean, absolutely wonderful. Not only, I mean, the endor- endorphins are kicking in. So that's, the, that's you know, a good the point. dopamine. So you f- you're feeling good because you're moving around and releasing those hormones. But you're also, yeah, releasing emotions or pent up. Oh, absolutely. Who knows what pent up stuff <laughs> <laughs> we hold. Well, you know, that's interesting because Radiate Wellness, we hosted a women's dance afternoon one time and we just um we started out with the intention of putting on music that didn't connect to any period right. didn't connect to any anything just music that was meant for movement mm-hmm. and just to explore movement um somewhere along the way it morphed into more popular songs from the 60s and 70s and um so it was more heavy on on that type of thing and we had a couple of women who came that uh, one of them was, was she was so visibly um, just moved by the mm. music. She mm. couldn't stay, unfortunately, mm. because just connecting the movement with the music of a certain time periods, it just overwhelmed her. Oh, sure. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, and music and, and movement does have that power. Sure. You know, again, yeah. because we have that inner, we have that emotion in the body, and then when it gets released through movement, mm-hmm. then um, we can... Those yeah, memories just, are... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right there. You triggered know? by music. Absolutely. Or, yeah. You know, you have certain memories that are triggered with music. I can't oh, hear me. Jack and Diane <laughs> <laughs> without thinking of being on the bus in high school going mm. to bowling for gym oh, class. that's funny. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, certain sounds are, are inextric- inextricably linked. Sorry, trying to trip it over my words. But just linked to memories in your mind. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so for you as a dance movement teacher and mm-hmm. choreographer, mm-hmm. yeah, do you find yourself working with that, trying to evoke it, or trying to work around it and keep the dancers kind of focused on the piece rather than how they connect to yeah. it? I mean, is there a certain, not to use to find a point, but like a certain dance in terms of, how you approach mm-hmm. each individual's dancer's um, connection? That's a okay. great question. Um, it's a great question. I found when I was a younger, newer choreographer, um, I tended to have everything very <laughs> pieced out and mm-hmm. counted out and very more of a structure. Mm-hmm. And as I've gotten older and hopefully developed a little more creati- creatively, I also like to see what the dancers bring to it. So I might have a phrase and then let them kind of improvise on the phrase. Right. Because what comes out of their bodies is something special and unique to them that I would never have thought of. Right. They're going to have their own connection. Yeah. So they have some investment in it. Right. Because it's theirs. They look really great doing it (laughs) because it's organic yes and so you know a lot of choreographers i think incorporate that more and more into their choreography Um, interesting uh, yeah that's what i've found i think in the modern dance realm or using improvisation as a Mm -hmm. tool for um choreography so yeah sometimes if a piece will be very set but i'll have a little section that might be based on improvisation or I'll you know give them a sixteen count phrase which is set, but then they can build on that. Um, it just takes it out of that. I'm doing choreography steps sort of thing. Right, right. And, and modern dance allows for a bit more fluidity. Yeah, it depends on the medium. For a musical theater piece, you know, you might right. have a very strict break, and then the chorus, and then you know. But I tr- I try to be even as creative as possible with all of my musical theater work too. But that has more of a structure sure. than say a modern dance piece that you're just creating, you know, from the ground up. Mm-hmm. And so for you, why modern dance? You know, I think modern dance is very um, forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Ballet right. is very um, strict. Um, there's more fluidity now between the ballet world and more of a contemporary ballet style. Mm-hmm. 
Um, in modern dance, um, the shelf life is older. You can be an older dancer and do modern. Uh, Burshnikov, for example, right. after he retired from ballet, after his knees were going out, he danced for, I don't know, 10 or 15 more years in the modern dance realm mm -hmm. with Twyla Tharp and doing other work with all kinds of choreographers. So there's a longer time, which I think I enjoy watching older dancers because they have that wisdom that body wisdom and that life wisdom, you know, so that's right. more of a richer range, I think, of choreography. Sure. Um, modern dance uses the floor. It uses breath. Um, so although you can be a fabulous technician and still do modern dance, I think it opens out the range of possibilities um, mm -hmm. a little bit more. Right. Of course it does. Yeah. Well, and I um, have lately been obsessing over the Netflix show, The OA. I don't oh, know if you're familiar. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a wonderful show. The f first season, uh, I don't want to give everything away, <laughs> but let's just say that this group of random people, they um, learn these movements. They call them the five movements, but they're very abstract and oh. random but when they do it together in a group that it has a precise number of participants and they're all doing these movements together, it opens up new dimensions. Oh, cool. You got to see it. Oh, yeah. It's so I cool. Want to. It is wonderful. So um, there's a second season that I'm, I'm currently binging and uh, they haven't come to the movements yet, but well, they oh. have a little bit. But anyway, this is good. Yeah. Is so, it a theater person who started this? Well, or? this was a choreographer who oh. had devised these movements. And mm. so, you know, I think people all over the world are saying, if we do these movements, can we shift our dimensions? But, oh. you know, ultimately it's a Netflix show mm -hmm. played by actors and the movements are choreographed by a, an actual choreographer. Right. But, uh, but it's just fun to imagine. And there was even a flash mob um, fairly recently in front of Trump Tower trying to, oh. right, shift to, to another dimension. Right. Well, hey. Using the movements. Why not? <laughs> Why not try? <laughs> yeah. Why not try? That's And fun. so it was just, so, but just to take the idea of movement and transcendence mm. literally mm. to another dimension. Right. It's like sometimes we feel like that, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can think specifically, you know, dancing to New Order or Joy Division. I love those bands or the Smiths and just mm -hmm. feeling like, oh, my gosh, nothing else exists. Yeah, it's a lovely feeling. Even as a professional dancer, do you get to that spot? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, <laughs> I'm i just thinking of that funny place, Funky Town, where they have all oh, the sure. 70s, 80s, and 90s. 60s music where everybody's just you know wildly on the dance floor and mostly baby boomers but some young people too right um yeah a place like that where it's just obviously people are just there to dance right and have fun you know dance um, is the common denominator it's right. like an equalizer yes yeah mm -hmm. and there's no pressure I mean nobody cares what <laughs> you look like and <laughs> people are dressed in their little neon outfits and but some place like that is it's fun. It's fun to just kind of let loose. But you can do it anywhere in your living room or absolutely, yeah, or a even party on the or, stage, right, right, to right. transcend with just feeling free, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Ultimately, I think when dancers are doing choreography, they want to get to the place where they're not thinking about the steps, but it's in their bodies. They can just perform. Yes, and that's kind of the ultimate brain body balance you know but then how do you leave that and make it where you're communicating with the audience because you are ultimately telling a story yes right 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 i remember taking my daughter to um performance of tom sawyer mm. down at the oh, new yeah. kaufman center you I know saw it was, that. It was mm -hmm. wonderful it was brand new um ballet that mm -hmm. was written specifically for the Kaufman Center. Right. The whole city of Kansas City did the big read. We all read Tom, well, yeah. those who wanted to participate, Tom Sawyer. Restaurants had menus inspired by mm -hmm. the book. I mean, it was a big deal. William Whitener did the choreography. Did he now? 
because he was the artistic director of the ballet at that time. Oh, it was it was mm-hmm. splendid. It and was. so my daughter was about five at the time, and I told her the story in advance so she knew the story and told her all of the things that she'd expect at a ballet performance mm. in this place and everything. And so we get there, and five minutes in, she says, Mama, are they going to start talking soon? Oh. that's the one thing I didn't tell her about a ballet performance. Mm. And I yeah, said, no, really honey, they tell the story with their bodies. And that's she right. said, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. She was fine. Okay. But it's just as effective as, as effective as if it were a musical, right? Because right? right. you knew exactly what the emotions were, what was at stake. Mm-hmm. You, They told that story, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. I don't know if it, you even had to know what the story was in order to follow it. Right. You could feel it. And you really see could. The energy and the relationships between oh, the absolutely. dancers. And yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I remember that. Yeah, it was one. It was just very lovely. Mm-hmm. Very lovely. Um, so, movement and dance and even music and, and everything else, it just contributes so much to the human experience. Yeah. Um, the wonderful experience that we do have. Is there anything else that you think like we need to? to mention about it, anything that you just like, feel like, well, we haven't talked about this, but I think it would be important to know. Yeah. I think that the advent of, you know, cell phones, computers tends to isolate us Mm -hmm. as a society. Of course we love our phones. Of course we love our computers. It brings us so much into the wider world, but it's not that personal connection. Exactly. And we're not moving. We're, we're sitting, not. There. We're sitting there. <laughs> um, so I think more than ever, it's important. You know, theater, dance, music. Um, it's our heritage. It's our birthright. Mm-hmm. Um, unless we want to be robots, you know. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> I don't care to. I suppose that's a possibility. If I can't listen to my music, I don't want to be a robot. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think it's essential to who we are as humans. It really is. The arts. It is such a... Yes, all of the arts, mm-hmm. right? And with dance, it's kind of hard to separate some of the other arts. Theatrics, mm-hmm. music, of course. Visual art. But, I mean, yeah, it's all a part of who we are as as humans and um as we get more technologically um adept Mm -hmm. you know we need to make sure there's a balance that's a really good point we do have to consciously make sure there's that balance Mm -hmm. i mean there's rise in depression suicide sure anxiety Uh, mm -hmm. panic disorders yeah are the united states our health is going down. It is. <laughs> I mean, our, our um, longevity, I guess. Oh, sure. Yes, yeah. it is. Um, so what does that say about us? <laughs> you know, there's something that's not in balance there. And um, it's important. I think the arts are, are crucial. They are. Absolutely. And I like your point about how just we can't, we've got, we've all got bodies. We've all got things we can move we mm-hmm. can all even if we're wheelchair bound or yes. right we can oh gosh still... there's dance companies now that what? are that have people with disabilities wonderful kind of, you know, mixed ability dance company right there's many of them mostly in big wonderful. cities like new york or san francisco right. or miami but the people in wheelchairs you know dancing with well, absolutely able-bodied people but they're all able-bodied you know right. they, they can all move something and um be a participant just because you're in a wheelchair it. doesn't mean you know you can't move anymore. Oh, absolutely. Oh, there's yeah. a wonderful little video going around the Facebooks and uh, this doctor who dances with all of his clients in the hospital and one of the one of the patients that he dances with um, is differently abled and, man, she gets after oh, it. Oh, that's great. Right? Just yeah. what, such joy mm-hmm. when you connect with the body that way. And yeah. She just had joy all over her face. I can just really recommend dancing (laughs) (laughs) it's so good for you (laughs) it is so good so much fun well andrea it has been just a joy to talk about dancing yeah the time has just flown past hasn't it though Mm -hmm. i know well um thank you so much for joining me this was a lot of fun it's been a pleasure great all right thanks and bye-bye bye
Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area, dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.